Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm at the NFA meeting in Mackinac Island, and I'm with Ian Newton, the president-elect of the NFA, and also the general manager at Flooring 101 in Southern California. Ian, how you doing? I'm doing great, Kemp. Thank you. Congratulations on being elected president. I know you'll do a great job. We'll get to some of that in just a minute. Let's start with your day job. You are general manager of Flooring 101, named after the 101 freeway that kind of runs through your market area. You have seven stores, and you're a very successful retailer. You're a top 100 retailer on our list with revenue, our estimate, roughly around $46 million, right? Correct. So how's business been this year? This has actually been strong. Um, What we're seeing in our marketplace is the foot traffic has definitely slowed down. It's been a bit more up and down, a little bit more volatile, but we're seeing the high-ticket items being sold, better-end goods are being sold, and less tire kickers. There's more um, qualified buyers coming through the door, which is good. So California, obviously a place where real estate is expensive, and people are, have figured out that it's a good place to park your money, right? Yep. We're a good place to shop, too. I mean, we're very competitive on our pricing. We do a lot of advertising. We take care of our consumer, and we're good at what we do. We've talked about your advertising before. You do some TV, but most of it's lead generating digital, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, we do that through mobile marketing, and uh, we're very successful at that. It brings in a lot of leads. We have a good referral program that we put out there, a lot of repeat customers. We do some TV advertising, mostly local TV. We like to be on local channel because most of our advertising is is locally themed and advertised that way. Uh, A little bit of print ad, but not too much direct mail. Pretty good mix. I've told this story before. I want to tell it again because you're a dream for an owner like Jimmy Poulos. Uh, Jimmy found you, you were from England, You'd come over to the United States, worked at McDonald's for a little while, and then he was looking for an installer and met you. You were 17 years old. That was 42 years ago. And now you're general manager and kind of running the day-to-day, right? That's right. I actually was at a a, um, flooring supply company in Ventura, and I got referred there to look for work because when I first came to the States, I actually worked part-time with an uncle who was installing carpet. And he was 72 years old, and he'd been installing carpet for 55 years. And he was getting ready to retire, and I'd helped him for a few months when I first came to the States. And then I was obviously looking for local work, and I was referred to go to a place called Victor Kemp Company in Ventura. And I went in there to apply for a job. I was supposed to go on Monday. I procrastinated, and I never went. I ended up going there on a Wednesday introduced myself to the manager and he said wait a minute there's somebody here was looking for extra help and it happened to be jimmy i mean you want to talk about split timing i mean within a minute just like that well i started out saying jimmy's lucky to have you and actually reciprocally yes. you're lucky to have him because he's been a wonderful life coach for you and he's given you a skin in the game taught you about investing in real estate so kind of guided both your career and some of your life decisions right? some of my personal life too absolutely yeah on some of the values that he has with his family the way he treats his family and other people so he's been a fantastic mentor friend father figure all of the above well, we're happy to have you come in now as president. You start January 1st in this role. You've been vice president before. You've been on the board as a member at large. So, you, I mean, you've served on the board before. But this, the way this NFA is structured, the president really does kind of guide the ship, right? Pretty much so. He does. I mean, there's a lot of help from the board, a lot of help from the members. Obviously, there's a lot of feedback. Obviously, Lisa does a lot of the work, too. She's a, a big part of the organization. Will you be keeping her on? I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd have a job very long without her. All but right. I'm excited. we got a, a new, fresh board. In other words, all the executive members actually rotated off this year, which I don't know if that's ever happened before. So i got all new, fresh um, people on there. And they're all young, enthusiastic, and so I'm kind of the, the veteran on the board now, believe it or not. So I feel like the old guy. Yeah, I mean, you, if you think about it, Jimmy finds you at 17. You're almost second generation, although you're not family. And, and you have, we're looking at the faces here. Some I was with last night commenting about how got Lauren Coles. I don't go through the whole list, but there's yeah. a lot of new faces running things. That 
to me, that is the strength of the NFA today, is that second and third generation. There's a lot of young energy in there, a lot of good ideas, a lot of input, a lot of feedback. So it's really exciting time for the NFA. I'm really enthused about that. And I got some of them on the board, too. So. Well, one of the things that we're watching is a little bit of consolidation in the channel. And I'm talking about, you know, private equity coming in. You see it with Artisan Design Group. And, you know, it's nice to see these independent businesses be passed down to another generation to continue to be kind of the lifeblood of the flooring industry, wouldn't you say? I would say that, definitely. That is a, a, a big part of the NFA, big part of the flooring industry. I think you see that a lot where it's passed on through generation or through generations of longtime employees, too, that take over businesses. So I think that that a lot of the um, flooring businesses are, are smaller companies, obviously growing to larger companies like us, but at the same time they're still smallly run companies. So um, I know you're just new in this, just uh, learned this yesterday, but uh, what, what are some of the challenges you think the NFA is facing that need to be addressed in, in the years to come? I would say some of the challenges would be the um, direction of the group as far as you know how much we want to grow and. If we need to grow, do we do you know what? How do we do that? Um, a lot of it, we would really want to challenge us to grow organically within the group. Have the members get larger. Um, to grow that way is obviously the the preferred way to do it. But I think there's um, obviously there's some companies that I think would be a good fit that uh, we'd like to bring in. Also, we want to look at uh, obviously domestic production too. I think that's that's going to be a big advantage going forward. We want to definitely work on a domestic um, flooring program. Now, that obviously fixes some supply chain issues before they ever happen. Is the consumer looking, does that make a difference to the consumer, do you think, as to what country it comes from? I would say that the consumer is not necessarily coming into the store to look for American-made, but I think if they see an option on there that, that this product is made domestically, if the price is comparable and the products look good, I think that she would make the choice to buy something that was made in America for sure. What I'm hearing is that millennial group, it may be looking at that where is it made label more so than the, the group that we've been waiting on up to this point. Yeah. As long as there's not a big price gap on there, I think that they would look at that. If, if the delta on the pricing is high, then obviously they're going to look for, for more value. But I think that the domestic production is obviously getting better. There's a lot of factories that are opening up. There's a lot of production that's going to come online in the next few years. From what I heard, it may grow to as much as 50% of LVT will be made stateside which is probably equate to about $4 billion. So there's a lot of growth there, a lot of opportunity, and I'd definitely like to see the NFA get in on the ground floor of that opportunity. So we're definitely looking at a few suppliers and manufacturers. That's good. That's good. We just did our 30th anniversary floor focus, and so I've got the stats on my head right now. Uh, in 96, 14% of what was sold in the flooring industry was imported, and today it's 58%. So... Uh, It'd be kind of nice to get that uh, back on the other side, wouldn't it? It would absolutely be nice to get that back on the state side. All right, Ian, well, I just wanted to spend time with you and say congratulations and let our listeners hear a little bit more about who's going to be leading the NFA next year. Again, we're talking to Ian Newton, the general manager at Flooring 101 in Southern Cal and the president-elect for the NFA, and you've been listening to Kemp Har and FloridaAlley.net.